What's up, everyone? Welcome to your weekly tech update, the show that explores the newest, coolest, and sometimes mind-boggling side of tech available on the interwebs. I am your tech advocate, Ray McNeil. Coming up on the program today, we're talking drones. They have come so far over the past 22 years. That's how long I've been on the air talking about them, by the way. So today, we're going to have a look back at some of the coolest drone stories on your weekly tech update. And not only drones, but VTOL aircraft, because pretty much they're the same thing. One is just much smaller than the other. We're talking drones. We'll show you how far they've come. And next week on your weekly tech update, I'm trying to get together all of the drone shows that were put on for the 4th of July 2022. And I would love to do a full show showing nothing but all of the various drone shows from all over the world. So I'm working on that, and fingers crossed we can have that on the air next week here on your weekly tech update. And of course, we're going to wrap up the program with this week's Moment of Joy. All that and a whole lot more coming up on today's edition of your weekly tech update next. everyone. In this week's drone news, if you're a drone pilot who wants to fly a drone somewhere you shouldn't, well, there's not a whole lot anyone can do to stop you. Due to a variety of legal complications that govern drones in flight and jamming equipment, but that hasn't stopped an industry of potential anti-drone solutions from springing up with products like last year's Drone Defender and Drone Shield's new Drone Gun. This gun looks like some sort of futuristic sci-fi weapon ripped straight out of the hands of a space marine. But in reality, well, it simply jams all possible radio frequencies that a drone can use to communicate with its operator. That causes it to to either return to its origin or immediately land depending on which model they have. It's designed to be operated by a single person with all of the electronics fitting in the drone gun itself and an attached backpack. On a more serious note, illegal drone flights are a serious issue for law enforcement officers and prison guards. There's no clear FAA regulations for allowing police officers to interfere with or jam drones in flight, but uh, there are very real safety concerns that can arise from unauthorized use of them, uh, whether it be smuggling items into a prison or, of course, filming a secure location. And while things like the drone gun may help with that, jamming devices are still banned under FCC code, meaning that regular consumers, even private security firms, probably won't be able to legally use one. That said, if regulations change and the drone gun can be legally used, well, it could be helpful for improving drone security. NASA's remotely piloted Icona aircraft, based at the agency's Armstrong Flight Research Center in Edwards, California, successfully flew its first mission in the national airspace system without a safety chase aircraft recently. This historic flight moves the United States one step closer to normalizing unmanned aircraft operations in the airspace used by commercial and private pilots. Flying these large, remotely piloted aircraft over the United States States opens the doors to all types of services, from monitoring and fighting forest fires to providing new emergency search and rescue operations. The technology in this aircraft could at some point be scaled down for use in other general aviation aircraft as well. Flights of large craft like Icona have traditionally required a safety chase aircraft to follow as it travels through the same airspace used by commercial aircraft. The FAA granted NASA special permissions to conduct this flight under the authority of a certificate of waiver. The certificate permitted Icona's pilot to rely on the latest detect and avoid technology, enabling the remote pilot on the ground to see and avoid other aircraft during the flight. It took off and entered controlled airspace almost immediately, 
Icona flew into the Class A airspace where commercial airliners fly just west of Edwards at an altitude of about 20,000 feet. The aircraft then turned north towards Fresno, requiring air traffic control to be transferred from the LA Center to Oakland. On the return trip, the pilot headed south, requiring communication control to be transferred again back to Los Angeles. The flight was the first remotely piloted aircraft to use airborne detect and avoid technology with all test objectives successfully accomplished. For more information on NASA's unmanned aircraft systems, you can visit go.nasa.gov. A French inventor took to Kickstarter last week to raise funds for an insect-inspired winged drone called Metafly. It generated quite a bit of buzz. At the time, more than 1,850 people had pledged more than $187,000 to bring the drone to market. Unlike traditional commercial drones, which use propellers to generate lift, winged drones use well, you guessed it, wings to take flight. Much like the bees it's modeled after, Metafly flaps its wings vigorously, creating a differential between draft and lift, an efficient flight mechanism used by flying animals. Thanks in part to this efficiency, the drone is lightweight, and maneuverable, if at times a bit erratic in flight. Metafly's purpose is to allow you to discover and experience this unique way of flying. Edwin Van Rubeck, Metafly's inventor, told Digital Trends, This is exciting at a whole different level compared with usual drones or flying models. Metafly is controlled using a two-channel remote control, which allows it to perform fantastic trajectories and maneuvers in the air. A skilled controller can navigate Metafly either outdoors or in, but must be careful not to crash into walls. Colleagues or, well, computers as well. There's no crash avoidance built into this drone. Metafly can fly up to 8 minutes on a single 12-minute charge and reach speeds of up to 11 miles an hour. The remote has a wireless range of 320 feet. Since Metafly only relies on its wings to fly, it doesn't need motors or bulky batteries, meaning it's lighter in weight than traditional drones. The machine is also designed to be durable. It's made out of an elastic material and sports front and rear bumpers to help protect it against serious collisions. A video promoting the product shows a user intentionally crashing Metafly into a tree, though we can't confirm if it actually recovered. The technology behind Metafly is the result of some five decades of tinkering. Biomimicry isn't all fun and games. Biology has inspired some groundbreaking inventions that save lives and shape the future. Metafly won't save the world, but it seems like a fun way to spend a few hours of your day. Metafly is currently going for $89 on Kickstarter. It's expected to ship sometime in September of 2019.